I'm McKenna. I'm the Summer Reading Club Coordinator and today I have our Monarch Butterfly release. Finally, we are at the end of our four weeks and today to celebrate our Monarch Butterfly release, I'm wearing my butterfly t-shirt and then these really awesome earrings from Little Buddy Studio. So it has the entire Monarch life cycle on it. It has the eggs, the caterpillar, the chrysalis and the Monarch. So like I said, we now have our two butterflies and in a video in a minute, I will show you uh, me releasing them. They open to a day apart, so they open on two different days, and so it's going to be two separate videos, and I sort of assumed that that was going to happen because one went in a few hours earlier than the other when it went into its chrysalis, uh, but now we finally have our butterflies, so I'll let you watch those videos now. So I wanted to talk about the anatomy of the butterfly, of the monarch butterfly in specific, and it's a pretty complex body. So I'm going to use Monarch Butterflies by Anne Hobby, illustrated by Olga Beaumont, and uh, published by Story Publishing uh, for pictures so that you can see it. So this is a book you can take out from the library. So here we have our butterfly. So. This is our butterfly. I wish I could show you it on a real butterfly, but they're too small. So there's the head, the antennae, the legs, the thorax, the abdomen, and then there's veining throughout the body of the butterfly, and that's important. I'll talk about that in a minute. And then the wings, and monarch butterflies have four wings. They have two top and two bottom, and it will appear like one full wing, but it's actually four. And then throughout the wings, there are scales, which help uh, form the coloring of the wing. And then, if you were to look at the face of the butterfly or the head, you would see the eyes, the palpi, the antennae, and the proboscis, which is the straw-like tongue that we talked about before. And then we will also talk about the gender of the butterfly in a minute. So I also have our lovely puppet back to show you. So the head, uh, Here's the head of our monarch butterfly. It is believed that monarch butterflies are actually deaf, so they have fantastic vision. Uh, and they have, it's like thousands of lenses in their eyes. It's something crazy. So they can see very, very well as a butterfly, which is completely different from when they were uh, caterpillars, because as we talked about, caterpillars can't see very well. And that's why they have the antennae that kind of go down to feel around. Then they have the proboscis, which is the straw-like tongue that they would uh, this guy probably won't do it very well, but essentially if you were to watch a butterfly, it'll unravel its proboscis and put it into a flower and slurp it up. And I have actually watched my butterflies form their proboscis before. So it it's, uh, splits when it actually opens up and then the proboscis has to fuse together and will curl over. It's a really interesting process. It's super cool. And sometimes if you raise monarch butterflies, you actually have to help them uh, fuse the proboscis. It's quite rare, but I've had to do it once before. Uh, and it's pretty cool to see the way that that part of the monarch body is formed. And then of course there are the antennae and then this guy has uh, our six little feet and it is believed that monarch butterflies uh, um, smell in, sorry, smell and feel with their antennae and then they taste with their feet. Uh, if you did our summer reading club fun fact sheet for the butterflies, uh, you probably would know that fact that they, uh, it's believed that they taste with their feet and that's why it's believed a lot of the times a monarch butterfly will land on milkweed so it can taste that it is milkweed before uh, laying an egg. And then, as we said, there's of course the thorax and the abdomen. And then the wings. So as I said, there are four wings. This one only shows two, but technically these would be one, two wings, and then one, two wings as well. Uh, they would be separated on an actual butterfly. And then... They're covered in micro scales, so a bunch of little itty itty bitty scales, and that helps provide them with the vibrant coloring as well as absorbing the heat from the sunshine. And then of course, to tell a male from a female butterfly, here I have a male butterfly. Uh, this is what this guy is, and you can tell by this dot on the bottom wing. And the veins on a male are also typically thinner than a female. And I will insert photos of butterflies that I have raised to show you a male versus a female. And once you can catch it, once you understand what it looks like, it's very easy to see them even when they're flying. Um, 
but yeah and you can't gender a caterpillar unless you were to dissect it you can gender a chrysalis it's very hard i've never been able to do it successfully you need a very good microscope and of course you can gender a butterfly so what's next for our two beautiful butterflies now? Uh, I don't know if I mentioned, but they are a male and a female, which I think was super cool that we have one of each. And so what's next for our two little butterflies? Well, uh, they can live anywhere from two to eight weeks. If I had to guess, I would say they're probably two to three weeks. They are likely the third, uh, sorry, likely the second generation of monarchs, maybe potentially the third. It's kind of hard to tell. Uh, so it's likely that they will all lay eggs and then whatever eggs they lay will be the ones that will fly down south or wherever they may end up. So there are four generations of monarch butterflies and the fourth as I stated are the ones that will fly down south. So here in Ontario almost every monarch in the late summer months will leave for the south. Uh, I read somewhere online that some may fly to Britain. I haven't been able to find a ton of research on that but maybe somebody knows something more than I do about monarch butterflies but I think that would be pretty far flight for a butterfly but who knows um i think that monarch butterflies are pretty interesting little guys and uh, they will fly up to 800 kilometers uh in their lifetime which when i did the math that's the same as driving from the witchurch stovall public library to disney in florida four times so if you're to the drive there and back four times that's the same distance uh, so imagine doing that four times over in your car. A little monarch butterfly does that in its life with its, with its two, four little wings. So that's pretty crazy. And so monarch butterflies that we see, uh, sorry, during the period of migration for monarchs in Ontario, there can be large groupings that you can spot migrating uh, along the north shores of Lake Erie and Lake Ontario. And sometimes you can see them in clusters. They'll fly around in clusters like you would see if you were to go to Mexico where they um, migrate to. You can actually see that here in Ontario while they're in the process of migrating. And although monarch butterflies will make their journey south in the early um, fall, like I said it is believed that some may actually even go to Britain uh, and it is known that some will not go as far as Mexico. Some will only go as far as Florida or even some of the more uh, northern states. Some of them won't make the flight all the way down. It is a journey that is pretty intense for that little butterfly. And it's even fascinating that most of them can make it to the south. So our first storybook today is called The Little Butterfly That Could and it's a companion to the very impatient butterfly that we read last week. And it is by Ross Burock and published by Scholastic Press. So The Little Butterfly That Could. Where are the flowers? Hey, have you seen a group of migrating butterflies? They went that way. Woohoo, I'm so close. Yeah, only 200 more miles. 200 miles? How am I supposed to travel that far? You fly. Can I take a plane? No. A hot air balloon? No. A blimp? No. Then I'll never make it. Oh, life was so much simpler as a caterpillar. I easily built a chrysalis. Chrysalis, I'm inside patiently waited to become a butterfly, as we know that was not true, then began my journey with friends to find flowers. But then, things got cloudy. When I emerged, I was lost and alone. You'll get there one mile at a time. But what if I get lost again or caught in a storm? What if a snake tries to eat me or a lizard or a bird or a dragonfly or a frog or a spider? Why does everyone think I'm so delicious? And this says the big book of things that eat butterflies, <laughs> which is a lot. We all get scared. Even you, you are the biggest creature in the ocean, but the ocean is bigger. Sometimes I get butterflies in my stomach too. <laughs> Whoosh, what are you doing? I'll just stay in here with the other butterflies. So he's going into the whale's tummy. This is way more spacious than my chrysalis. Hmm, anything to eat other than krill? No? I'll just order in. Hello, a bouquet of flowers, please. Extra nectar. The occasion, I'm hungry. My address, a whale. Click. Hello. Hello. Wait, can't I just live in your stomach forever? No. How about one year lease? No, you have to keep trying. Right, right, keep trying. 200 miles, no problem. Getting closer, I can smell the flowers. 
How far did I fly? Two feet. Two feet? That's it. All I smell is failure. Don't give up. Keep trying. Right, right. Keep trying. Nothing can stop me. Except the wind. Splat. Right back where I started. I'll never get there. You're just not there yet. Wow. Believe you can. Okay, believe you can do it. You were born to fly. I was born to cry. The only thing you have to fear is everything. Is it, is at, if at first you don't succeed, stop trying. No, if at first you don't succeed, fly, fly again. Go find your way. I got this. Stay on track, mile 25. Wind at my back, mile 50. Don't get eaten, mile 100. Keep trying, mile 125. Keep flying, mile 150. Keep trying, 200 miles later. I did it, you found your way. You know, there's nothing I can't do when I believe in myself. I could fly a million more miles. That's great, now eat up before we go dormant. Door what now? You know, stay still all winter. Right, right, stay still all winter, no problem. How long is winter? <laughs> I would say he's back to being the very impatient butterfly. In past videos, I've talked about threats to monarchs and I have one more for us today and it's related actually to uh, what is about to happen to our monarch butterflies. And that is uh, the loss of locations to overwinter in, in Mexico due to forestation. And so unfortunately that's posing a pretty large problem right now because uh, monarchs like to go up and they like to hang in the trees and if they don't have those trees there then where they're going to roost right where are they going to live so something you can do to help is you can plant gardens for monarchs uh, which also invites other pollinating pals and although this will not help with the overwintering in Mexico at least it will create safe environments here in Ontario for our monarch butterflies so I did not do a pollinator garden this year, but I did a pollinator pot due to the lack of space that I had. And inside of it, I put some native uh, herbs and flowers that po pollinators of all sorts really enjoy. And it's super simple to do a pollinator garden or a pollinator pot. You just need to put aside some space, uh, either in a pot or a garden. And some of the uh, plants you may include would be butterfly milkweed, bee balm, sage, lavender, honeysuckle, chives, especially if you let them go to seed, chamomile, zinnias, black-eyed Susans, dill, which you also let go to seed. I have a dill plant uh, right there. I don't know if you can see it <laughs> right in the corner there. And it's gone to seed, hyssop, and sunflowers. And this will, like I said, not only attract monarchs, but pollinators of all sorts, which is very important. And our last storybook for our program is A Butterfly's Patient by Diana Hutz Aston, Sylvia Long, um, published by Chronicle Books. And here's a bunch of butterflies and caterpillars. There's our monarch right there. A Butterfly's Patient. A butterfly is patient. It begins as an egg beneath an umbrella of leaves, protected from rain, hidden from creatures that might harm it until the caterpillar inside chews free from its egg casing, tiny, wingless, hungry to grow. A butterfly is creative. A caterpillar feeds on leaves, eating so much that it must molt or shed its skin many times. It can grow up to 30,000 times larger than it was when it took its first bite. Once a caterpillar has eaten all that it needs, it creates a protective covering called a chrysalis. Curled inside the chrysalis, it is growing wings. Now it is time for metamorphosis, changing from one form to another. A butterfly is helpful. Butterflies like bees help pollinate plants so that they can reproduce or make seeds. As a butterfly fit, flits from flower to flower, sipping nectar, tiny grains of pollen cling to its body, then fall away onto the flowers. Seeds are only produced when pollen is transferred between flowers of the same species. This is called pollination. A butterfly is protective. Butterflies use their wings to protect themselves from predators such as hungry birds, lizards, and other insects. Some butterflies have markings on their wings called eye spots, which are these guys. Scientists don't know what they are used for, perhaps to scare away predators or attract mates. Wings can help butterflies camouflage or hide themselves in the environment. 
One kind of butterfly, the peacock butterfly, makes a hissing sound by rubbing its wings together when it is alarmed. A butterfly is poisonous. The warming, the warning colors of some butterflies' wings, yellows, reds, orange, whites, and blacks, tell predators that they are poisonous or bad tasting. Monarchs and pipevine swallowtails eat poisonous plants as caterpillars, so they become poisonous as adults. Birds and other insects have learned not to eat them. A butterfly is spectacular. A butterfly is thirsty. To find flowers, butterflies smell the air with their antennae. They taste with their feet, but sip nectar, the sweet liquid produced by many flowers, with a proboscis, a tongue that coils and uncoils. Some butterflies get their nourishment from rotting fruit or minerals. Often, a kaleidoscope of butterflies gathers as a puddle club in mud near a pond or a lake to drink water rich with salts and minerals. A butterfly is big. The rare Queen of Alexandra's bird wing is the largest butterfly in the world with wings that can span up to one foot, which is 30.4 centimeters. It lives in the rainforest in northern Popo, Papua New Guinea and tiny. The smallest is the rarely seen Aryan small blue found in Afghanistan with a wingspan of less than one third of an inch, which is eight millimeters, about the length of a grain of rice. So do you see the little itty bitty one? And here's the big one. A butterfly is scaly. A rainbow of shiny powdery scales covers the wings of a butterfly. Scales stack like shingles on a roof. Without scales, its wings would be as transparent as the wings of a bee or a dragonfly. The colors, patterns, and shapes of a butterfly's wings have a purpose. Some use their pattern or colors to attract mates in places, oh sorry, in places where the climate is cool, dark scales absorb heat from the sun, warming the butterfly's flight muscles. Butterflies are cold-blooded and must have a body temperature of 86 degrees Fahrenheit, which is 30 degrees Celsius to fly. A butterfly is not a moth. We already talked about this. Butterflies and moths belong to the same family of insects, the Lepidoptera which means a scale wing. They are the only insects with, insects with scaly wings, but there are differences between them. Mo moths appeared on Earth between 100 and 190 million years ago, butterflies 40 million years ago, during the Cretaceous period, when flowering plants and the nectar uh, most butterflies needed to survive evolved. Nearly every kind of butterfly flies during the day, while most moths fly at night. A moth spins a cocoon made of silk while a butterfly wraps itself in a chrysalis or exoskeleton made from its skin. And as we talked about, the chrysalis actually is a part of the monarch or the butterfly's body for most butterflies. A butterfly is a traveler. What butterfly is that? I think you should recognize that one. Most butterflies such as the red admiral or the common buckeye migrate a short distance to find warmer place, but some like the monarch travel far. Although monarchs weigh only as much as a few rose petals, they can fly almost 3,000 miles from Canada to their winter home in Mexico at a rate of 20 miles or 20 kilometers per hour. That's pretty fast. <laughs> um, glider pilots have reported seeing monarchs flying at an altitude of 11,000 feet higher than some clouds. A butterfly is magical. You should recognize this one too. Monarchs gather in huge numbers in the forests of central Mexico waiting for spring. Then, they fly north to the milkweed plants in North America where they lay their eggs. Now it is time again for their metamorphosis. And here's our lovely monarch pals. A butterfly is patient. The egg hatches, the caterpillars emerge, feasting on leaves before the, it wraps itself into its warm protective chrysalis, patiently waiting. And ours patiently waited, for I think it was about 11 days, 10 or 11 days. And they wait to soar. And here's what all of the caterpillars in the front of the book became. So there's our monarch again. And I wanted to share a fun fact today. So although small to us, monarch butterflies are actually considered to be one of the largest butterfly species in North America, which is pretty amazing to think because as we have talked about in with some of the storybooks in the past, there are butterflies the size of a dinner plate. 
and then there are some butterflies that are as, that are as small as um, like a dime and so it's pretty crazy to think that the monarch butterfly is actually considered to be one of the larger butterflies here in North America. So I would just like to thank you all for tuning in and watching our monarch butterflies go from eggs to caterpillars to butterflies in the last three to four weeks. I think it's been about four weeks for them. And it's a little bit bittersweet for me for this to be over. Uh, it's such a fun process to raise monarch butterflies and it's very interesting and I love to share it with other people. Please just remember that you should not be going and taking eggs or caterpillars that can survive on their own. And if you are going to pursue um, any raising of any sort of any wild animal, you should be doing an extensive amount of research and you should have a good understanding of their requirements and their needs to be able to survive. And if you would like to learn more about butterflies, you can join the Lake Simcoe Region Conservation Authority on August 11th from 1.30 p.m. until 2 p.m. Uh, for a program on butterflies. It is available for ages five to 10 years old and it's free. You just need to register over uh, with their website so you can check out their website for more information. And this is the end of our monarch rearing journey together and our butterfly programming. And I thank you all again for uh, taking part with me and following along. It's been fun and I hope you learned something and hopefully I will see most of you in our summer reading club for the last few weeks. Bye!